could have fancy music playing, but I'm afraid that's too high tech for me. But here's Maggie and I for another little treat on bringing your Philanopsis inside from the patio and uh, tips and tricks that I seem to use myself. You go find a place to amuse yourself. Okay, I've just carried them all in from the patio and uh, what we want to do is make sure we didn't carry anything else in with them like little bugs and things and I don't want to start keeping them in the house until I've gone over them carefully. So what I do is the wiping, I'll wipe each leaf down with my isoprol alcohol that I have watered down somewhat, but I will look it over carefully and I haven't watered it in I'd say two weeks. So I know like the, this is a recycled paint can. My husband took the, the top off and uh, he drilled all these little holes. It took him a while. <laughs> so I can feel through all these holes that it's dry in there. And the roots that are coming out, the aerial roots, are, well, amazingly, some of them are still green tips. But if you look at them, some of them are going brown. So it hasn't been watered in over a week anyway. And when they're outside, I pretty well... Um, we sit out in the patio, we look at them, we enjoy them that way, but really, honestly, no care. Every once in a while, if I see they're not, they don't have much color in the aerial roots, then I give them a good soaking. I just dump the water can like I did in the other video. That's it for, depending on the weather, three, four more days till I do it again. So, you know, you can go on holiday for a week it won't it won't matter too much and they actually I think they thrive better on neglect than they do on over caring and so now what else you're going to do is every leaf you're going to make sure there's no scale and I won't wipe them all down right now but I'll show you I will wipe every leaf and some of them have got dusty so I'll wipe them all clean make sure and after that, um, I noticed it's been probably around 42 in the evenings here for a couple weeks. It's been dipping down pretty low. And then it warms up in the daytime, but it's been getting low for a couple weeks. And I actually put on a long sleeve sweater. So when it's long sleeve sweater time, they're like me. They don't like to be too cold. And... They don't like, I don't like ice cubes drop down my back and I don't think they do either because they're, they love to be warm and they're going to be in the house now so they'll be happy. Now I have here a kaiki, it's a Hawaiian name for baby and I'm just going to let it stay. Some people could take it off and start a new plant. I have uh, read that they can even bloom from the kaiki if I leave them long enough and I'm kind of looking forward to trying that and see how it looks so that's something we can look forward to all of us and so this Philanopsis it has a new leaf in here it also has already a flower started sprout coming out it's about an inch long right in, if I can get it, it's right in there. So I've looked it over and let's say I wiped every leaf, don't forget. Now I like to do that first because when I water, I, I don't, I'm sure the alcohol doesn't hurt it but I don't like to leave it on. So if I was somewhere else wiping it on the patio or on, even while they're on display, if I saw a, a little bit of scale on it or something, then I would wipe it and I have a spray bottle and I would just spray it after just to just to make sure that it's, I baby them but I don't like to use chemicals even on my lemon trees in the greenhouse and the orange tree I do not use chemicals 
and I'll pick a hot day and go in there with the hose as hard as I can get it, even though there's lemons all over the tree, and I will just spray the scale wash off, and, and uh, there's a lot of ants that get out there, and if I didn't keep it under control, I'd probably get sooty mold, because they start harvesting the stuff, but that's another thing, but I don't like to use anything harsh, so as you can see, this is, is it's healthy. I actually do not see any scale. There's a leaf that's getting a bit yellow, but I don't take them off till they're ready to fall off, so I just leave them. And I like, some people like them in the pots because you have a lot of orchids close and they keep them in small pots so the roots aren't sticking out, taking up more space. I like them to, to spread out and I, I think sometime I'm gonna try a whole different method of a big one growing kind of neat because I love being playful with it. Anyway, it goes in the sink like so. I better stick something in there, get it a little higher. I think this will do. Stick that in there, get it higher so I'm not injuring anything. And warm water, not cold. Now what we're going to do is we are going to soak it. We are going to let this run through. It will get rid of any salts and stuff that's accumulated. Clean the soil. I'm not running it over the center of the plant. I'm going down the inside and I am just going to soak it. And where I get over on this side too, this whole bucket, I want it running out all the holes. And it's kind of like I probably dredge them twice a year, that's it. So then they dry out and they only get little water and then I'll dredge again. And I like this method. Um, you don't have to baby them. I do talk to them lots. I don't know. So anyway, like, it's like my watering jug double. I'm just letting it drench. And when you've got the air holes on the side, you can even spray in there. Because when it's stretching day, you want to get as much water in there. Like, I don't want to stick them in buckets. I don't want to harm the roots that are sticking out. That's why I usually display them on little stands inside a bowl of water. So that the, the roots are free. So, I know it's not five minutes or ten minutes in a bucket or anything like that, but it seems to have worked. And I'm a Gemini and we're hopeless. And the one thing you must do is don't throw away your tides. Of course, I bought them all and I threw all the tides away and I know they're fairly noxious, but other than that. See, and what I do is then once they're all white, they're all washed, they're all clean, I love having fun with different decorating ideas. So I have a collection of bowls I pick up at garage sales cheap. And I put these upside down squares in. And then I fill the bowl with water. So they have humidity and I got little sparkles in here. So it looks pretty too. And then uh, what I'll do is when I'm finished with them, and I'll probably be going through all these but not with you guys. It'll sit on a dish. It'll be, the sunlight will catch off of this. The bottom won't be sitting on our window, uh, west facing window is tiled. And I do not want them to have cold feet. So this way they set above the water and the water will come up. They'll get lots of humidity. And that I will go through and do them all. And uh, this one, it set spikes. I've got two beautiful spikes coming. And I believe more. This is another one in pink cans. These are my two first ones I got. But uh, there's more. Uh, there's another little spike started to come. Right in here, there's a little spike starting to come. The roots are healthy, the plant is healthy, they love it outside. It's like going on holiday to Hawaii or something. And they get the break and then they get to come in and, and then we get to enjoy them. And I was reading, which is very interesting, but if you wanted to go on NASA Clean Air Study, 
Wikipedia, that's just NASA, they have a chart of all the plants that improve your quality of life in your home. And moth orchids are, they'll re, re, take out the exiting and toiling, they're really good, and they're also non-toxic for animals. Yay, Maggie! So, um, Philanopsis are good for the air, and something about, else about them, they can be in your bedroom because they let off oxygen in the evening when you're sleeping, and so they're very good for a bedroom. Now, if you get some spots on your orchid that are hard to clean with just a cloth like this, especially inside in here. Now if you see some scale in there, you just have to take a Q-tip. I should have poured this in a little dish. It would be easier. Pour it in the cap. Yeah, I'm not really a planner. But anyway, there we go. So then we can get right into all the crevices. And if I see a little piece of scale in there, because for some reason the places the air can't circulate as well, I think that's where they they like to go. And um, even this one you'll see is very healthy. It's got some older leaves that are going, but I don't take them off until they have to come off. The little ones are all doing good. And I did want to show you, as I mounted this, on my last video. It's got new little sprouts coming with blossoms going to come. And it's got new leaves. It's doing awesome. I haven't, like sometimes when you read about it, they say soak it in under the water. I haven't had to do that. I've been spraying it. And if my husband walks by, boy, he's getting well trained. He'll even sprinkle it. <laughs> so we all have fun with the plants. And uh, keeps us all happy and healthy. And let's see, what else should I tell you about them? Oh, yes. Now, when you're out going to Gratil, if you do, or visiting your mother-in-law and she's throwing stuff out, watch out for little copper trays like this. Copper because it's, uh, it still looks nice even if it gets wet. And you put it over your bowl. I think this is an old fondue pot. I don't know how many people fondue anymore, but you do that and you get your orchid and you put it up. You got a nice little display. You got your water in your bowl. It's getting the humidity. And oh, have fun. Like decorate them, put them in the light. They're all gonna go in my west facing window. I would never, never, never do that until this time of year. Now we get lots of light in this window, but it's cooled right down and it should be safe for them. And there was one other little trick. Anyway, th if just this, if you see sold for hornets, but it is great for fruit flies. And if you get little flies flying around your plants in your window, you take one of these wasp bottles, you put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in it, and you just put it in your window or around your plants, and the fruit flies, I don't know if you can see them, but they're flying in there like crazy. They fly in there, stop bothering your plants, stop bothering you. It's decorative and it works like a darn. Forget all that other stuff they sell. Just a little apple cider vinegar and one of these jars. You see them all over the place and you're all set to go. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration and I hope you'll go out and buy an orchid and have fun. Yep. I think someone's at the door so I'll see you later.